Hi everybody, um, hope you can see on the screen here, I'm hoping to um, come to you about your um, English exam tonight and I want to go through um, your question 4 and paper 1. Remember it's for the, the most marks and we want to make sure that um, you uh, really work on this as soon as you get into your exam. Some of you may want to do question one first and just ease yourself into the exam and then we really would like you to go on to question four. Um, so I'm just going to go through here and just remind you about what um, the text was about. So if you remember it was about Susie Salmon and she was a murdered girl and she was talking about a tragedy from heaven. And you could see there, um, it says there, question one for four marks and it's, we're looking at you to take five minutes on that and gain four statements. A really good tip with this is please make sure that you read the line numbers 5 to 10 or whatever it says on your exam. They're not always going to be 5 to 10 but they're usually at the beginning of the text but please make sure. If you answer outside of those lines you won't gain the marks. And always a really good tip would always be to start your short brief sentence with what your question is about. So for instance it says list four details from this part of the text that we learn about uh, the Susie Salmon from the story. So you could start each sentence with Susie Salmon blah blah Susie Salmon. So if you have a look at some of the answers on here okay she had a quote from a Spanish poet in her yearbook so you, where they started she here these students you could put Susie had a quote from a Spanish poet in her yearbook etc. So it's pretty straightforward and I know that's something that you've been doing in class, okay? So, if we go further along, you can see here, this is your type of question, okay? So on our question four, it will always be like this. There'll be no surprises. It will be from this section, uh, focus on the second paragraph to the end of the extract that starts. The murderer is a man from our neighbourhood. Okay, The student, having read this section, said, The writer conveys a sense of fear and tension. She clearly wants the reader to feel anger and sympathy for Susie. Okay, so on here, there are two parts for this question. The first part, how the writer conveys a sense of fear and tension. So how has this writer used words to put that across to the reader? Conveys is just another word for shows or puts across with words. Okay, So we're going to have a look at that this evening. The next part of your answer would be that she clearly wants the reader to feel anger and sympathy for Susie. So again, two parts to this, sense of that fear and tension, and then I need to have a look at where this writer has used words, where they make the reader feel angry that Susie's put herself in this situation, but also sympathy of her immaturity. Okay? So it will always say, to what extent do you agree? And as you can see from the PowerPoint slide, we do always want you to agree. You can put a counter argument in there where you don't agree but most of the writers that you're going to read in paper one are established writers and it's going to be easy for you to find words and phrases and language features that these established writers have used that you can put in your point evidence explains paragraph okay so it says write about your own impressions of how the situation occurred and how it's portrayed so remember the portrayed is how do those words describe. So we could think about the sense of fear and tension for that part. Evaluate how the writer has created these impressions. Okay, So we're going to consider that character, that use of language and structure. And you must always at the bottom add those quotations to each of your supporting statements. Please remember that a good English language student can pick out short quotes. If you don't pick out those quotes, then you're not going to get those marks, that grade for, for showing that you're able to read a text and really take things from it. Show the, show the examiner that you know how words are effective and you can comment on them. Okay? So, we're going to have a quick look at the text. Okay? And... 
and know this is how you've practiced. So you can see at the side here at the text, it says look carefully at this extract. First of all, establish what the writer's intentions are and write one or two sentences to sum up what the writer's intentions are in relation to the statement. Now a lot of the time in the exam you might not get time to do that, but what you could be doing as you're reading through, you could then start highlighting. So for instance, even in our first paragraph here, the murderer is a man from our neighbourhood, my mother liked his border flowers and my father talked to him once about fertiliser. My murderer believed in an old-fashioned things like eggshells and coffee grounds, which he said his uh, own mother had used. My father came home smiling, making jokes about the man's garden might be beautiful, but it would stink to high heaven once a heat wave hit. Now, if you're aware of things like that, sometimes, you may have seen them on the television, when berries bodies are buried, they do smell. So the first hint of some tension in this I would use the phrase, it would stink to high heaven once a heat wave heat hit. So the writer here is just hinting, the writer here is just hinting that and Mr Harvey, there is something a little bit cynical about him, a little bit mysterious about him. Um, and then when you look further on in this text, because this is the part where you have to get that fear and tension. Susie then, because it's supposed to be this Susie narrating, but on December the 6th, 1973, it was snowing, and I took a shortcut through the, com the cornfield back from the junior high. It was dark out because the days were shorter in winter, and I remember how the broken corn sticks made my, way, m my walk more difficult. So when I read that, I start to be feel a little bit tense. I also could feel a little bit of anger towards Susie. And I hope you can see what I'm... You know, I'm thinking here, so I'm thinking, well, I could use a quote of snowing and shortcut and dark. The writer has used those for almost to make the reader feel quite angry for Susie, because that's taking a risk. So we know that it's dark nights, it's short winter nights, and we know that she's taking that risk going through that shortcut. So those are the quotes that I would use to create that kind of almost anger about her. But that's also creating a little bit of tension because we now we know that she's walking, she already tells you that she's dead and we know that she's putting herself in a very vulnerable position. So I might want to add a little bit about structure. Now don't forget, even though you've mentioned it in question three, you can still mention that in your question four. You can mention language features that you've mentioned in question two, and you can also mention structure questions in quest from question three in question four. The structure that I would use in my question four answer, so after I've mentioned about the introduction of Mr. Harvey, about how his garden would smell, that create that little bit of tension, that tension and that anger for, uh, for Susie about the snowing and uh, the dark days, now, the structure I would use as one of my point evidence explained paragraphs would be dialogue. So Mr. Harvey is introduced with the dialogue between him and Susie with, Don't let me startle you, Mr. Harvey said. Now, Mr. Harvey is stood in a dark field at night and a cornfield in a shortcut. And so it's quite ironic that he uses the word startle because that was his intentions. So now our writer has cleverly started to create a sense of fear and tension here. And I would zoom in, I would make my point evidence explain about structure. So one of the reasons I agree with the student statement that the writer does convey a sense of fear of tension is when the writer uses dialogue between Mr. Harvey and Susie. And then I would use my quote, don't let me startle you, said Mr. Harvey. And then I might just, then I would go back in and say, the word startle is ironic. Because that was Mr. Harvey's intention, and the readers know this. He almost gives us that sense of foreshadowing of why he's there in this dark field. Okay? And it goes on with that dialogue. Um, obviously, you can see that Susie is um, beginning to get quite nervous. And another piece of dialogue um, that I would have uh, picked up on, and it's a little bit further down, is where it says, and it begins with the words, although. 
and he says, although the eldest in my family and good at acting a science quiz, I had never felt comfortable with adults. Now this for me, I now begin to feel a little bit of sympathy for Susie because this shows her immaturity. She's there in a cornfield in the dark and this writer has cleverly portrayed the immaturity of somebody just taking a risk, not wanting to take the long way home. But he's really got, has to be or feels that she has to be quite respectful to Mr Harvey but really doesn't feel comfortable with him or any other adults and I'm sure some of our students may agree with that. So that would be another part of the dialogue that I would mention. So at the moment I've got quite a few things that I could talk about in this answer and what I would say to you is that please make sure that you add at least at least an uh, introduction and three point evidence explain. I would like you to add four and a conclusion because this is for 20 marks and they are expecting a mini essay so it's, it's really important that you look at the extract that you have to work on and pick those um, quotes out that match what you've been asked to agree with. Okay, so we have we have our tension starting um, we kind of feel anger for Susie putting herself in this shortcut when it's snowing we feel that this Mr Harvey is creating some fear and tension with his dialogue and we now start to feel a little bit of sympathy for Susie. Okay, so um, Right at the end, I when I look now, and Mr Harvey, if you look right at the end on our last two lines, Mr Harvey says, it's after dark, Susie, he said. I wish now that I had known this was weird. I had never told him my name. And what I like about the ending is I do feel a lot of sympathy now because now we have this tone of regret. And we know that AQA on their answers this year they are looking for what kind of tone the writer has set and so throughout this Susie in this extract if you've got something like this in your exam she's telling you exactly what happened on that night but remember that she's also telling you about an event that obviously she regrets because she's in heaven so one of the ways that they create that tone is the way that she tells you about this flashback she's telling you about exactly what happened on that evening so that think about this logically when you get into your exam don't panic but just please remember to look at the text and think about it logically what do you know as a language student about language features and what what effect are they having on the reader that match that statement what structure has this writer used within this part and how does that help you agree with this statement and what's that tone okay um, if you look at the marking scheme very quickly this is broken down you can see here at kind of level two you can attempt to evaluate a comment on the text and I'm sure all our, our students can do this you can offer an example from the text to explain those views so that short quote you are able to comment on the writer's method so is that structure, is it tone, is it language features and you can select with some quotations however to really cement that grade 4 and 5 you really want to be able to clearly evaluate so if this is something that you would like to do I really would like you to think about doing this um, when you get to a study clinic or the next um, stream that we do Please ask, you know, ask us about writing a good strong point evidence explained for this because we'd like you to be able to feel confident and go clearly to explain your views, clearly, confidently pick out those relevant quotations. And at the level four stage, you critically evaluate the text in a very detailed way. And I know some of our learners are getting really good at inferring, looking at words, looking at con you know the connotation so for instance when Mr Harvey says how are you folks why is a grown man in a field late at night in the dark asking such a casual question and you could say that dialogue that the writer used shows how Mr Harvey was intentionally trying to put Susie at ease so he could manipulate her to then go with her to 
where he was going to kill her. So it's those kind of extra evaluation skills that you really need to use. Okay, and just very quickly before we end this stream, um, this PowerPoint, if it's not on, it will be going on to uh, the VLE. And you can see there it has some sentence starters. And these are really important to make you feel confident going into this exam. So when you are doing your revision over the next couple of um, weeks, and as I say, when you go to the study clinics, have a try at using some of these. Um, if you look to the uh, right of the screen, you've got I agree in this section of the text. I strongly agree. Um, furthermore, so you can create that flow of your answer. You can make that a good strong essay by, um, you know, you're putting those furthermores and the effect the writer wants is to create. Um, and, and again, on the left hand side there, you can see some other. Um, sentence starters. I know when I was practicing at uni and things it was always handy to have a different range so that you're not using constantly I agree because, I agree because. So really try and have a look at using those different sentence starters. Okay. Um, another good one of being able to just start off your answers. Don't be frightened of, as you can see there, I agree with the statement. The writer creates a sense of so for me, sense uh, creates that sense of tension and fear by what? Okay, so you can look at those. Um, if you do want to look a bit further into this, and um, there, this this will be online, the lovely bones text, or hopefully you've all got it in your folders. You can try this for homework. Okay, so how, uh, remember that question three as well is about structure, so what I've advised my students to do that question four, so remember that really five for success, that means five points, get a brief introduction for your question four following that statement, develop those three or four points, that tone, structure, language feature, sentence choice, and then a brief conclusion. Okay, but if you wanted to try again, looking at that structure um, on this PowerPoint, that as I say, I'll make sure that you, it's on the VLE for tomorrow. You can then look at um, doing structure. So remember that structure. You can practice some of that terminology. So the circular structure, the flashback, which we had in here, dialogue, narrowing the focus, widening the focus, and the main attention that I'd like you to think about this question is using the bullet points. You have about 10 or 12 minutes to answer this. So it says, what does the writer focus our attention at the beginning of an extract? So in that first paper one on the 5th of June, on that Tuesday morning, you're only going to get one piece of text to read. And I know all of you can look at what do they focus on at the beginning? Is it on the character? Is it on the environment? Is it a good description on the on the environment? Okay. Or how and why changes the extract as it develops? So think about the middle. How does it move? Is it dialogue? And then any other structural features. Okay, so I hope that's been a help tonight. Please, as I say, have a look on the VLE. This will be on VLE and the text for the lovely bones, but you should all have it in your in your folders. And um, good luck and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks.